In this video, I am going to beat Pokemon Emerald with only a Torkoal, and I expect this to be quite challenging. After all, this little turtle only has 20 base speed. Its other stats are actually pretty good for a solo challenge. It has 70 HP, 85 attack, 140 defense, 85 special attack, and 70 special defense. When I was a kid, I always assumed that this thing was a fire rock type. After all, its shell looks kind of like a rock shell. But no, it's just a mono fire type, which is actually really good for it, especially in a region that has too much water. Its move pool is unfortunately not very diverse. It starts with Ember and Smog, and then through level up, it gets Curse, Smokescreen, Fire Spin, Body Slam, Protect, Flamethrower, Iron Defense, Amnesia, Flail, and Heat Wave. The presence of Iron Defense and Amnesia really drives home the fact that Torkoal is supposed to be a very defensive Pokemon. It's a bit frustrating that it learns Flamethrower, which is base 95 power, and then Heat Wave much later on, which is only a 5 power increase, and it has significantly worse accuracy. So while it's cool that it gets this move, I'm not going to be using it today. Through TMs and HMs, it gets access to the standard complement of moves, as well as moves like Sunny Day, Flamethrower, Sludge Bomb, Fire Blast, and Overheat. So let's take on the rival for the first time. Obviously, I've decided for him to have Mudkip. This is going to give me the most challenges. Overall, though, the rival in Generation 3 is not nearly as challenging as the rival in Generation 1, so he shouldn't be too much of a problem. Well, in this case, I am going to have to defeat him with Smog, which is base 20 power and has 70% accuracy. After missing twice, I figured out that it's probably just going to do more damage overall if I attack with Ember every single turn. And by doing that, I take the Mudkip down to red health, but Torkoal is going to faint too. Well, unless I burn it and the burn damage knocks it out. So that was a close first battle. Now, of course, in this playthrough, I don't expect Torkoal to be outspeeding many opponents. It has trash speed. Look at it. It's the only single digit stat I have right now. So I'm going to go with a quiet nature to boost my special attack and lower my speed. In addition to this, Torkoal comes with the ability White Smoke, which prevents stat reduction. And that's actually really nice because now the Mighty Yenas that are so plentiful in this game are not going to annoy me with Intimidate. All right, it's time to take on the first trainer, and he is Youngster Calvin, and we've got art for him now because he's very awful when you have a psychic type. Oh, and today I forgot to heal. It's lucky that I have a great defense stat. The Puchiana only does two damage to me, and then I knock it out on the second turn. Now, unfortunately for my fire type Pokemon, I have to face Roxanne first, and through level up, it doesn't really learn anything that's going to be particularly good against her rock type Pokemon. In order to win, I think I'm going to have to rely on my high defense stat, as well as the fact that in Generation 3, all fire type moves deal special damage, and that's perfect because the Geodudes specifically have extremely low special defense. When I arrive in Rustboro City, I'm only level 11, and this is not going to be enough to defeat Roxanne, so I head out onto Route 16 and defeat all the trainers here. While I'm doing this, you might wonder why my Torkoal is named Mariah. Well, it's named after a longtime viewer who was in the chat when I was streaming this playthrough on Twitch. By the way, I played this run back in December, and since then I have done a lot of visual tweaks to my Generation 3 overlay, and I'm really excited to roll those out in next week's video, so stay tuned for that. After defeating all the trainers here, I head into Roxanne's gym, and I also defeat all of the trainers here. If you've caught an HM user at this point, you have to be careful not to enter into a double battle here, so I can do that by just going around behind this guy and talking to him from the side. Okay, with those trainers out of the way, Torkoal is now level 15, and I'm ready to take on Roxanne for the first time. She leads with Geodude. Here I'm really hoping that Ember does a lot, and it gets a critical hit taking Geodude to red. That's perfect. It strikes back with Rock Tomb doing about a fifth, and then Roxanne uses a potion. This does take it out of KO range, but because the Geodude is so slow, yes, it is slower than my quiet Torkoal, I move twice in a row and knock it out, so that's good. The next one comes out, it misses its first attack, and because of that, even after Roxanne uses a potion, I'm able to knock it out for free. Okay, now it's time to take on the Nose Pass, and this is the one I'm worried about, because it has decent special defense. And yeah, I'm really not doing very much to it. Here's the thing though, at level 14, Torkoal learns Smokescreen, and I can use this to lower Nose Pass's accuracy, ensuring it doesn't hit me with a lot of Rock-type moves. When I start attacking, I also get some luck because I burn the Nose Pass, which cuts its attack stat as well as doing damage to it every turn. And because of that, Torkoal takes a victory on its first attempt against Roxanne. 
After finishing off the small plot line with the Team Aqua Grunt and Pico, I have to give a mandatory match call to the president. This is so annoying. I hate doing this. And then after that, I decide to face Brendan at the outskirts of Rustboro City. His lead Pokemon is a Slugma, so I guess Ember is the best thing to use here. Like, yes, Ember actually has a higher effective power than Smog. Ah, oh, Smog is so bad. That's gotta be one of the worst moves. I just played Coughing last week in Pokemon Crystal and like, yeah. Why do they make the early poison moves so bad? After the Slugma goes down, he sends in Mudkip, but I was yawned, so Torkoal falls asleep, and as a result, the water type takes me out. All right, you know what's annoying about that? I uh, saved in front of Roxanne, so it looks like I have to beat her again. Luckily for Torkoal, it has no problems defeating her on its second attempt either, so yeah. This time I save in front of Brendan so that this is not going to happen again. And then against the Slugma, I set up Curse to maximize my attack and my defense stat. Also, I have three speed left over by the time the Mudkip comes out. What I was really hoping here is that this would boost Smog's damage enough to maybe one-shot the Mudkip. But Smog is really bad, so it misses on the first turn. By the way, the Mudkip is storing energy with Bide. When Smog hits, it only does just over half, and then Mudkip unleashes energy and knocks Torkoal out. All right, just great. Let's try this fight for a third time. I set up Smokescreen against the Slugma, so it can't do any damage to me. I also want to prevent Yawn here. Still, right after I start setting up Curse, it yawns me, so I guess Torkoal is going to sleep. I wake up, finish setting up Curse, and then I knock the Slugma out with a single Smog. Okay, time for the Mudkip. It moves first, hits Water Gun, doing a decent amount. My Smog does half. It also poisons, which I guess is nice. Mudkip hits another Water Gun. Torkoal survives. Okay, please, Smog, do not miss. It doesn't, and Mudkip goes down. All right, so I beat him. It was not particularly easy, but I'll take it. After making my way back through the forest, I decide to catch some HM friends in this patch of grass. Wingle's a good flying Pokemon, Meryl is a great water type user, and finally I backtrack just a little bit to catch a Zigzagoon for Cut. I talk to Mr. Briny next, take a boat trip, and arrive in Duford Island. Now here, a bunch of stars are about to align for Torkoal, because inside the first house, I can talk to this guy with the blonde hair, and he gives me the silk scarf, which boosts the power of normal type moves by 10%. And the reason I say that stars are about to align is because at level 20, Torkoal is going to learn Body Slam. This move is going to synergize so well with the Silk Scarf and Curse. However, if I want to minimize the time spent playing, I'm not going to fight any more trainers in Brawly's gym, so I am going to take him on at level 17. Let's see how this goes. For this battle, it is really lucky that I am not a Rock-type Pokémon. First turn, I decided to set up Curse, because increasing my defense stat will be helpful throughout this battle. After that, I use Ember, and it knocks the Machop out in two hits because of a lucky crit. Next is Metatite. This thing is not a problem because its only damage-dealing move is Focus Punch, so if I just keep attacking, it'll eventually faint. It is annoying because it sets up Light Screen for his team, and this hasn't worn off by the first turn against Makuhita, so I do very little damage there. Okay, and it's starting to use Bulk Up to set up, which is going to make it very scary. So I decided to use Smokescreen to lower its accuracy and hopefully allow me to take less damage. The thing I didn't know is that uh, Vital Throw bypasses accuracy checks, so these smoke screens were just complete wasted time. Because of this misplay, Torkoal eventually goes down. I try this fight again, and I make it back to the Makuhita with much less health. However, I have set up Curse four times. This allows Smog to do decent damage to the Makuhita. I know it is really painful to see me using Smog, and while its accuracy is pretty low, at least it has a 40% chance to cause poison. I get it on my second Smog. Makuhita heals with a Citrus Berry, but it isn't enough, and I take it out. So Torkoal has earned itself the second badge. In the Slateport Beach House, I decide to do some training and like, oh no, there's so many water Pokemon here. The first tuber has a Meryl, which takes a while to knock out. I'm doing this training now because I really want Body Slam as soon as possible. The next person has a Goldeen. Ah, uh, another water type Pokemon. It actually gets really annoying with Confuse Ray. At least it doesn't have a water move. It looks like this Goldeen is basically a clone of the Goldeen that is in Misty's gym in Generation 1. Now there have been so many water type Pokemon here that I saved before the last Sailor. I'm just like really paranoid. He has a Wingull, great. Another water type Pokemon. I get confused, hit myself, and yeah, the Wingull finishes my turtle off. Ah, that is a painful reset. Instead of fighting that guy again, I'll just go to the museum and try and defeat the mandatory trainers here. But of course, the first guy has a Carvana, which is a water type Pokemon, like it's a fish. It's a piranha, ah. It does half damage to Torkoal before the second trainer. 
Luckily he leads with a Zubat. It does a little bit of damage to me before he sends out his fish. Also, I'm confused here, but luckily Torkoal moves, hits Ember, gets a critical hit, and knocks the Carvana out in a single turn. Okay, that's level 20, and now I can learn Body Slam in the place of Smog. Good riddance to this awful inaccurate move. At the Slate Port Mart, I pick up some Paralyze Heals. This is really important because on the next route, there are so many Pokemon that can paralyze you. Also, I'm going to train against most of the trainers here. And then against this Pokefan, he sends out Skitty, uses Sing right away, and then starts double slapping Torkoal, which still can hit more than two times. Like, I realized that, like, each one of the attacks is probably a double slap, but it always seemed really weird for me. Moves like Double Kick always hit twice. Anyways, this actually gets really scary because it takes me all the way down to 8 hit points before Torkoal wakes up. Luckily, I hit with Body Slam and knock it out, so that's his only Pokemon. I have survived. I'm not going to have to reset there. Unfortunately, though, I don't have enough potions, so I have to backtrack to Slateport City to heal, wasting a little bit of time. I head into the Trick House. There's some training in here, which is really nice to do now because coming back here later is basically just a waste of time. And I really want to explore this area because I need the rare candy. You might think, why not skip this rare candy, save some time? Well, uh, Torkoal is going to have to fight Wallace at the end of the game. I have no idea what I'm going to do against him. Well, that's a problem for another time because now I have to face the rival for the third time. He leads with Lombre and, oh, I forgot to heal my Torkoal. Like, oh <laughs> no, this is so bad. Okay, well, I'll set up Curse a few times. Hopefully I won't take too much damage and then I can sweep his team with Body Slam. Lombre takes me down to yellow health before I knock it out with a single body slam. Next is Slugma, it goes for Yawn, and then I knock it out with body slam. Okay, all that's left is his ace, Marsh Tom. It moves first, hits Water Gun, and Torkoal survives on six hit points. I strike back with body slam and knock it out. Okay, so that fight was very lucky. Granted, I think if I had just started it with full health, it would have been pretty trivial overall. Now, there are some mandatory trainers on the rest of this route, so I'll backtrack to Slateport City and heal. Oh, uh, no, I ran into this guy by accident. <laughs> by the way, using the running shoes on four times speed is actually really hard. Like, navigating through the map can be quite a challenge. So now, I'm going to have to defeat his two Pokemon without losing six hit points. Luckily, the first one is Aaron. I think it's Aaron, like the name, Ar Aron, I'm not sure. Anyways, I'm hoping here that Ember is going to get the one hit. It doesn't. I get hit by Headbutt, and Torkoal survives with two hit points. On the next turn, I knock it out, and then he sends in Electrike. Okay, does this thing know Quick Attack? Because that's probably going to finish me. Instead, though, it goes for Thunder Wave, paralyzing Torkoal. I still move, hit Body Slam, and knock it out. Another close victory. I get to heal, and then I make my way into Marvel City. Here, I have to face Wally, and uh, yeah, he's really bad. He has a level 16 Ralts. I just one-hit it, and that's that. Now, Watson's next, and I did some additional training to get Torkoal to level 28 over the next damage rounding threshold. So hopefully this is going to be enough. After all, the Electric Master usually causes a lot of problems. His first Pokemon is Voltorb, and I figured that I could just set up Curse here and then sweep with Body Slam, but this is not the best idea, and I realized that as soon as I got paralyzed. I don't have a Cherry Berry, so I'm not going to heal. Luckily here, the speed cut from Paralysis doesn't really matter. After all, Torkoal is very slow. It has uh, single digit speeds and a uh, triple digit attack and defense. I do manage to knock out the Voltorb, the Electrike, and make it to the Magneton. I wasn't sure if here I should use Ember or Body Slam. I chose Ember, it takes the Magneton down to red hit points, Watson heals, I take it back down to red hit points, but then it finishes me off. Surprisingly in the last fight, I actually got further than I thought I would, and maybe with a little bit better luck against the Voltorb and the Electrike, I could make it back to the Magneton with more health. In the next fight, it doesn't happen, and this is largely because I'm trying to set up Curse. But what if I just don't need Curse? I can one-shot the Voltorb with Body Slam, one-shot the Electrike with Body Slam, and make it back to the Magneton with much more health. This way, I can use Ember to two-shot it. Well, in this case, he heals twice, and then my third Ember gets a critical hit and knocks Magneton out. So, I made it to the Manectric. Manectric moves first, using Shockwave, which does a decent amount of damage. My Body Slam doesn't do half. It hits Shockwave, taking Torkoal to 7 hit points. And because I don't get a better damage roll, Manectric survives and finishes Torkoal off. Alright, so what I should try to do is set up Curse once. This way I'll be able to two-shot the Manectric for sure. Unfortunately, in the next fight, due to paralysis and confusion, the Magneton takes me out. And then in the next battle, I get unlucky, make it to the Manectric with too little health and it finishes me off.
All right, so as expected, Watson is a challenging foe. I think I need to do some more training. And I probably should have just done this from the start. After all, in two levels at level 30, Torkoal learns Flamethrower, which is a huge upgrade to Ember. With it, I am going to be able to one-shot the Magneton. Minectrix next, and in this case, I don't need to use Body Slam because I can just go for Flamethrower. It does way more than half. Minectric heals with the Citrus Berry, uses Shockwave. It doesn't do enough damage, of course, and I knock it out on the next turn. So Watson is no more. Now in the next section of the game, Torkoal has the chance to learn Iron Defense. And overall, I think that Smokescreen actually might be more useful than this move, at least in the short term. I can see Iron Defense making a return when I have to face Steven later on. So for now, I'm not gonna learn it. Here, I wanna draw your attention to a hidden item in Fall Arbor Town. Right here in this crater, there is a nugget. So that's nice to know about. After that, I take a gondola trip. Here I have a chance to see a hiker, but he doesn't show up today. I'm waiting for the moment when that happens. I know it's gonna happen. I'm gonna play this game a lot. Next, I have to face Maxi. It's really nice to not be intimidated by the Mighty Anna. It goes for Bite, which does so little. My flamethrower takes it out in a single hit. Next is Camerupt. Okay, I guess I gotta body slam this thing. It does use Magnitude, which is super effective against me, but it doesn't do very much because I have a huge defense stat, and I knock it out with a critical hit body slam on the next turn. Zubat's next. It confuses me. I hit myself. It hits wing attack. I snap out of confusion, and flamethrower one-shots it. Okay, so that's perfect. One of the mistakes that I've made most often in my Emerald playthroughs is that I've forgotten to pick up the Meteorite right after defeating Maxi. However, now I'm remembering it every time, so this isn't a problem anymore. In Laveridge Town, Torkoal is going to get another big boost to its damage output because I can talk to this old man and get myself the Charcoal. And now, it's time to face Flannery. I'd say of all the gym leaders in Hoenn, she's the one that surprised me the most. However, with Torkoal, I don't think I'm going to have any problems. Nommel is first, and I just one-shot it because it does no magnitude, and I want to move on to the Slugma, which doesn't have magnitude, and here I can set up Curse. I do twice doubling my attack stat, and then I knock it out with Body Slam. Okay, camera up's next, I'm hoping for the one hit, I get it, and all that's left is the mirror match of Torkoal vs Torkoal. But in this case, it looks like her AI is only going to allow her Torkoal to use Body Slam, and obviously mine is doing much more damage, so I take an easy victory over the Fire-type Master. Now, she does give me the TM for Overheat, which is a base 140 Fire-type move. However, it has some serious drawbacks. Number one, it has 90% accuracy. Number two, it only has 5 PP. Small PP leads to a lot of PP problems, and that's usually bad in these challenges. Also, whenever you use Overheat, it lowers the user's special attack by two stages, effectively cutting it in half. As a result, I doubt that I'm going to be using this move at all today. So that means I'm going to be going into the fight against Norman with the exact same moveset that I had for Flannery. He leads with Spinda, it goes for Psybeam first turn, and then my Flamethrower knocks it out in a single hit. Next is Vigoroth. By the way, I really want to do a Vigoroth for a slacking video. No promises on when that'll come out, but I am gonna do it. Flamethrower finishes it off, he sends in Linoon, it goes for Slash, which does very little. This thing survives my Flamethrower, he uses a Hyper Potion, I roll for damage again, it does less burns. The burn damage doesn't knock it out. He heals it again with a hyper potion. I go for another flamethrower, this time doing a little bit more damage and burn finishes it off. All right, that took a while. Now here I really want to slow the footage down and show you something that is so strange. He sends in slacking and then I have the chance to choose my move. And then it says slacking is loafing around and I use flamethrower and it does half. Like, what happened there? He just sent out the slacking, so it should be able to move on the first turn it's in battle, but instead it was loafing around right away. So my only theory about what's happening here is that the burn damage that knocked the Linoon out messed up the turn counter, slacking was actually sent in on the previous turn, where it was supposed to be able to attack, and then the turn rolled over, making it loaf around on the first turn that it was actually in battle. Anyways, this was a very weird interaction and it gives Torkoal an easy victory over Norman. The next section of the game provides me with some very useful items. There are two rare candies to pick up, one in Petalburg City, and the other one on my way backtracking through the middle of the map. After that, I get some citrus berries and some lepa berries. Lepa berries always are perfect because they're great for your PP. After that, I defeat the Team Aqua Admin in the Weather Institute, and then I have to defeat Brendan for the last time. By the way, of all of the fights in the playthrough, this one is definitely the easiest, so yeah, no problems here, even though he has a Marsh Tomp. 
Continuing the theme of awesome items, I get another rare candy up here past this little cut tree. I help Steven deal with the Kecleon, and after that I can clear these stairs, surf over to this weird island cave. It's called the Scorched Slab, by the way, which is like the coolest name ever. I just wish there was a little bit more going on here. The only thing to do here is just pick up the TM for Sunny Day. And with that, I make my way into the gym to challenge Winona. She leads with Swablu. I think that Flamethrower is going to do more damage, and I take it down in a single hit. Next is Pelipper. Of course it is. It's going to use Protect. <laughs> then it uses Water Gun, dealing a decent amount. But my Body Slam causes Paralysis, so I move first on the next turn and finish it off. Next, she sends in Altaria. Now, because it resists Flamethrower, Body Slam is going to be the better choice. I was hoping for an early Paralysis, since this thing is setting up a lot of Dragon Dances. I don't get it, and I also don't get the two hit. At least I cause paralysis, which really messes up its speed. So now Torkoal is moving first, and I'm able to finish it off before it does a lot of damage. And with her ace fainting, I've basically won. After all, next she has Skarmory, and of course Flamethrower can easily one-hit it. And then Tropius is last. By the way, I really want to do a Generation 3 playthrough with this Pokemon, so hopefully in the very near future. So with Winona out of the way, I make my way over to Lily Cove City, and after that I have to explore the Magma Hideout. This all culminates in a battle against Maxi. In this case, the Mighty Anna's Intimidate is blocked by White Smoke, and then it uses Swagger, boosting my attack stat, so I guess that's nice. I move through the Confusion, hit Flamethrower, and knock his lead out. Next is Camerupt. I also move through my Confusion here, and knock it out with a single Body Slam, and now all that's left is Crobat. Torkoal damages itself, but its defense stat is decent, so I don't take that much. And then on the next turn, I snap out of confusion and finish the Crobat off. In the Team Aqua Hideout, I have to face Admin Matt. He might have the coolest style of all the admins, but like, he's really easy today, nothing to talk about here. And that takes us all the way to Tate and Liza's gym. Perhaps the hardest gym battle for a solo challenge in the first three generations. So let's see if Torkoal can manage them. They lead with Zatu and Claydol. For this battle, I've taught Torkoal Amnesia in the place of Smokescreen. Now you will have noticed that I've had Amnesia on my moveset for a little while, and I figured that it could be useful here to boost my special defense, and hopefully take less damage after their Pokemon set up Calm Mind and use moves like Psychic. The problem is that Claydol just loves using Earthquake, so it does a lot of damage to me on the first turn. Then Zatu uses Psychic, which does a little bit, and Claydol hits another Earthquake, taking Torkoal down to orange health. I went for Body Slam on the Claydol, hoping to two hit, but it's doing closer to a third. Third. Needless to say, this fight ends up as a loss. So I head out to sea, because there are a lot of trainers here out on the water. I fight all of them, then I defeat one wild tentacle, which takes Torkoal all the way up to level 58. So this is over three more damage rounding thresholds, and I hope that that's going to be enough damage to two-shot the Claydol. But unfortunately for me, it looks like it's just not. So maybe instead of using Body Slam against it, I should be using Flamethrower, and uh, yeah, it looks like that's the case. But this battle is going to be a loss because I took too much damage already. And then I realized that I have a different play here. What if I teach Torkoal Rest in the place of Flamethrower? At first this seems like a really weird choice to make, after all Flamethrower is an amazing stab attack and it just did more to the Claydol. However, what this now means is that I can set up with both Curse and Amnesia, boosting both of my defensive stats, and then I can heal using Rest. The more I set up, the harder and harder it will be for Tate and Liza to knock me out, and the more damage Body Slam will be doing. Really the only flaw to this strategy is that eventually their Pokemon are going to get critical hits, and if they get them at the uh, worst possible moment, like right here, where the Claydol gets a critical hit with Ancient Power, so yeah, I, I lose, but I think I would have survived that because my defense stat was so high, like, I, I think I would have lived that even though I had red health. In the next fight, once again, the Claydol gets a critical hit, and because of that, Torkoal goes down. Come on! So I decided to do some backtracking here and pick up some Chesto Berries because I didn't have any. This way I can use Resto Chesto strats with Torkoal. It's worth noting I did lose one more time. Eventually I learned that I didn't need to set up fully, so with only plus 4 attack I am able to defeat them. Next I have a battle alongside Steven. Now since I have Rest, this battle isn't very interesting, so we're just going to move on to the fight against Archie. You might be wondering here about Flamethrower. Well, I can always relearn it with the TM from the game corner if I really need to. However, the synergy between Body Slam, Curse, Rest, and Amnesia is just really good, so I can see myself making it through a good portion of the game with this moveset. At least until Phoebe, that is. I defeat Archie, finish off the plot, and then I make my way through the puzzles in Juan's gym. Now you might be wondering at this point, 
Scott, you haven't talked about hidden power at all, and yeah, I need to. So in Generation 2, I am only going to be using hidden power in my second playthroughs. That's just because those games are quite easy. Whereas in Generation 3, hidden power solves a lot less problems. Just because the EV system in these games is not as broken as it is in Generation 1 and 2, so your Pokemon doesn't become, like, vastly overpowered. Like, in Generation 1, if I was playing with Torkoal, it would probably be outspeeding everyone, even if natures existed and it had a quiet nature. And also, it's worth noting in Emerald, I am only doing single playthroughs. It's largely because I don't know these games very well yet, so I don't want to optimize and waste a bunch of time and then look back on the video and just be like, yeah, that's really unsatisfying. Torkoal could do much better now. So because I'm only doing single playthroughs and because Hidden Power doesn't help quite as much, I am going to be using it in these playthroughs. And today I decided to go with Hidden Power Electric. After all, it's super effective against flying Pokemon, as well as Wallace's team. And it does do four times damage against Gyarados when they show up. Hopefully it's going to be enough to help me out against Juan, because he is the first of two Water-type trainers that Torkoal is going to have to get through. I teach it in the place of Curse. After all, that move is not going to be particularly useful for this battle. And I have learned the position of a lot of Hidden Heart scales, so I can collect those and use them to relearn moves if I really need to. Alright, let's do this. First is Love Disc. By the way, uh, February 14th, Love Disc playthrough coming to the channel. I'm uh, very excited for that. So because it's not particularly scary, the only thing it can really do is Water Pulse and Confuse Me. I am going to set up Amnesia here so that I take way less damage throughout the rest of the battle. You'll notice that here I have a Chesto Berry so I can heal, snap out of Confusion, and then use Hidden Power Electric to one-shot the Love Disc. Next, Juan sends in Celio. I go for Hidden Power Electric and it gets the one hit. Okay, that's really good. Next is Whiskash, and of course I'm going to have to knock this thing out with two uses of Body Slam. And then against the Crawdont, I think I just made a misclick here and used Body Slam. Oh well, it takes it out over two hits, that's not a huge issue. Last is Kingdra. I go for Hidden Power Electric. It doesn't do quite half, so because of that, I decided to use Body Slam. One, to see if it would do more damage, but also because it could paralyze. Wan heals Kingdra, and then eventually I am able to take it down. So here, Amnesia was the perfect move to help Torkoal pull through. Maybe that's how I'm going to get by Wallace. Before the league, I have to face Wally. He's not an issue today. Torkoal doesn't even drop below half health during this fight. And with him out of the way, it is time to take on the Elite Four. First is Sydney. He leads with Mightyena. Luckily I have white smoke, so no intimidate today. You'll notice here that I've replaced hidden power with flamethrower. After all, I can just buy more hidden power TMs and then teach it later on when I need it against Wallace. For now, the fire move is just going to be better. In Generation 3, all dark type moves deal special damage, so I set up Amnesia fully before I start to sweep Sydney's team. Flamethrower 1 hits the Absol. He sends in Crawdont next. I use flamethrower against it, like... Yeah, sure, maybe Body Slam would do more. No, it actually doesn't. The Flamethrower does more. Anyways, I knock it out, no issues, and move on to his final two Pokemon, which are Shiftree and Cacturn. By the way, I got a shiny Cacnea and evolved it into a shiny Cacturn in Scarlet and Violet, so I'm really happy about that. So now, with Sydney out of the way, it is time to take on Phoebe. For this fight, I've given Torkoal a Lepa Berry because the Dusclops have pressure, and I really don't want to run out of uses of Flamethrower. After all, it's the only move that I can use to damage them, other than Struggle, but there's no way I'm getting to Struggle. They're going to knock me out before that. It looks like against the first Dusclops, I have a roll. The first time I don't get it, she heals it, but then the second time I roll better damage and it goes down to one hit. The next Dusclops, on the other hand, is going to survive. It's a higher level after after all. It also knows Earthquake. Like, that's kind of weird. It's not doing that much. It takes me to half health before I knock it out. Unfortunately, the Bayonet moves first, uses Grudge, and then I knock it out with Flamethrower. So that completely depletes my PP, and then the Lepa Berry heals it, which is perfect. I finish Sableye with a single Flamethrower, and then the last Bayonet comes out. It goes for Psychic, does very little, and then I finish it off. Okay, so Torkoal is doing very well. By the way, in this fight, I sort of realized why they might have made Lorelei and Glacia have Pokemon that are part water types. It really helps the ice type shore up its weaknesses against fire Pokemon. Against the Celio, I decided to set up Amnesia so that I wouldn't take very much damage from water type moves. And then I realized something awful about the AI. It knows that I'm setting up, and so it's just like, 
yeah, I'm going to use Encore. And as a result, it can just keep forcing me to use Amnesia over and over and over again. Between its uses of Encore, I take damage from both Hail and the occasional Body Slam. And as a result, Torkoal goes down. All right, so well played, Glacia. That was a very good strategy. So I can't go for Amnesia against the first Celio. Instead, I go for Body Slam. It does about half. Then I use Flamethrower to knock it out. Next, she sends in Wall Rain. And I decided that maybe I could set up Amnesia here, but in this case, Surf is doing too much to me and she takes Torkoal down. Here's the thing though, I'm outspeeding the Celio, so I can go for Amnesia on the first turn when it sets up Hail, and then I can switch into Body Slam and avoid the Encore. This allows me to move on to the Wall Rain with a little bit of setup, and here I went for another Amnesia, hoping that I would boost my special defense enough to survive a hit, but uh, yeah, it just gets a critical hit with Surf and knocks Torkoal out. In the next fight, I got a little bit greedy because I realized that the Celio is sometimes using Body Slam and not Encore. So I was like, well, I can probably set up one or two Amnesias, but no, I get trapped in the Encore again and Torkoal goes down. So that is not a good strategy. I'm a little bit embarrassed to say this, but I actually tried the strategy again. But in this case, at the very last moment, Torkoal is able to use Rest and fully regain its health. I take my time here against the Celio so that I move on to the Wall Rain with green health. It's doing a decent amount of damage to me, so I have to use Rest to heal, and this fight's quite slow, but eventually I do manage to take it out. The fact is that I'm set up for victory here because she can basically do no damage to me, like the Glalie tries to use Crunch, which is a special move, so it doesn't do that much. I finish it off with Flamethrower. Next is her other Celio. I heal up with Rest, and then I knock it out with two Flamethrowers. After that, it's time for the final Glalie, and Flamethrower finishes it off. So Torkoal has made it to Drake. Let's do this. Unfortunately for me, as soon as I knock the Shellgon out, he sends in Flygon, and it knows Earthquake, so yeah, that's one loss for me. What can I do against this thing? Well, for more damage, which is really the important thing right now, I can teach Return in the place of Body Slam. I set up Amnesia fully, knock the Shellgon out, and move on to the Flygon. Okay, let's see how much Return does. It does more than half. I survive the second Earthquake with red health and knock it out. However, that isn't good enough because the Salamence can just knock Torkoal out. That exact scenario plays out in the next fight too. I love here that Torkoal survives on one hit point from the Flygon's second Earthquake, but that isn't enough and Salamence finishes me again. However, there still might be an option here. If I give Torkoal the Quick Claw, then it can sometimes move first against the Flygon or the Salamence. In this case, the Flygon gets two Earthquakes in, as it did before, but I move first against the Salamence and heal fully with Rest. It takes some time because I have to heal up multiple times, but eventually I do knock it out and move on to the Kingdra. Now this is the Pokemon that I set up Amnesia for because it's going to be using Surf against me. Luckily, it's not doing enough damage, and I'm able to take it out with three uses of Return. All that's left is Altaria. I shrug off its double edge and knock it out with a second Return. Alright, so Torkoal has done it. It has defeated the Elite Four. And now it only has two trainers left in its way. Of them, I think that Wallace is going to be much more challenging. And he's next, so let's do it. So there are a few potential strategies here. And first I'm going to try using Sunny Day to cut the power of water type moves. After all, the Whiskash can't be hit by Hidden Power Electric. And I would really like to take less damage throughout this fight. Plus Amnesia plus Sunny Day could be a good combination. Wailord outspeeds me, uses Rain Dance, and I hit Return, so that's okay. On the next turn, I move first because of the Quick Claw and set up Sunny Day, which is perfect because then Wailord hits Water Spout and only does a third. My next return takes it to Red Health. Now instead of attacking, I'm going to set up Amnesia here so that I can hopefully survive longer in the fight. But unfortunately, the Quick Claw doesn't activate enough times and the Wailord finishes me off. So to this point, I have saved all my rare candies in the playthrough. Let's use them now and take Torkoal up to level 79. Unfortunately, I'm still not outspeeding the Whale Lord, but because I'm at a higher level, I have more HP and special defense, so it's a lot easier to set up Amnesia here. After that, I use Return, I get a lucky critical hit, and I knock the Whale Lord out in one turn. That is nice. Next, he sends in Ludicolo. I do a lot of damage with Return. It's on red health now, so I think Wallace is going to use a healing item, so I use Rest to heal myself. Unfortunately, he sets up double team instead, like well played Wallace, I guess. As a result, Ludicolo is able to hit Torkoal three times with Surf before I take it down, and then Wallace sends in Tentacruel. Now it loves using Toxic, which is fine for me. Return takes it to red. Now at this point I was like, I should play around the full restore, so I use Sunny Day to set up the sun. Wallace heals with a full restore, and then I can use Rest. 
You can see here that the AI knows that my Pokemon has a lot of special defense and that the sun is active, so Tentacruel is choosing to use Sludge Bomb because it does the most damage. As a result, I'm able to take it down and move on to the Whiskash. First turn, it loves using Amnesia, so I get a free two hit against it, and then Wallace sends in Gyarados. Luckily with White Smoke, it can't cut my attack stat, so I'm able to take it down with two uses of Return and move on to Wallace's final Pokemon, the Milotic. I was quite worried going up against it because I wasn't sure if it was just gonna one hit me right away with Surf. Luckily, my setup with Amnesia allows Torkoal to survive on red health, and I get to set up Sunny Day. This cuts the damage from the next Surf and allows me to survive long enough to use Rest to recover to full health. Now I didn't really plan my turns out particularly well here, I forgot how many turns Sunny Day has been on the field. Let me know if you want a weather counter on the overlay in the future. I think it would just be like a little pop-up area that shows up whenever weather is active and then disappears when the weather is gone. Because I mistimed things, I used Sunny Day when I didn't need it, it just fails, which is embarrassing, but oh well. <laughs> After that, Milotic goes for Toxic, followed by Surf, which gives me the time I need to get two returns in and finish it off. So wow, I am really surprised by this, Wallace was not nearly as challenging as I thought he would be. Torkoal defeated the Elite Four with a time of 2 hours 31 minutes and 37 seconds, with 22 resets at level 79. And this took a game time of 8 hours and 41 minutes. But there is still one trainer left to defeat. We have to beat Steven Stone. For this fight, I think that the moveset is quite obvious. Sunny Day and Flamethrower together for damage, Rest for recovery, and Iron Defense so that Steven is not going to do very much to me. So as I set up Iron Defense against the Skarmory, I want to draw your attention down to the stats in the bottom left. Here you can see that my overlay is calculating that I have 1161 defense. It's actually bumping into the stage modifier because you're never supposed to have four digits in any of your stats. The reason it went over the stat cap, which is 999, is because I actually have to calculate this value in real time with JavaScript. You might ask the question here if it's even necessary to calculate this value, like why not just read it from the game? And this is because the game actually never saves your current in-battle stats at a location in RAM. It just saves the stats that your Pokemon has at that level. And then whenever it needs to deal damage, it takes the stage modifier, calculates your current stat, and then calculates the damage. So if I want to show the stat that a Pokemon has during a battle with stage modifiers added in, I have to calculate this myself. Anyways, after I've set up Sunny Day, I was hoping for a very easy sweep of Steven's team. I take down the Metagross in one hit, which is nice. He sends in Claydol next. I guess I have to use Flamethrower against it. It gets a critical hit and one hits, that's nice, and then it's time for the Aggron. Now this thing is a rock steel type, so it takes neutral damage from fire moves, but I think I should have enough damage. Well, Aggron outspeeds, uses thunder, and Flamethrower does not even half, so that's a reset. In the next battle, you can see that I fixed the stat problem in the bottom left. I finish off the Metagross, and now the Claydol is not very good because you can stall it out very easily. It only has 10 uses of Earthquake and 5 uses of Ancient Power. So I use Rest here to deplete its attacking moves. And after that, I tried to knock it out with Flamethrower, but I don't quite do it, so I want to heal before the Aggron. After all, it has Thunder, so it's going to use that against me. But unfortunately for me, when I take the Claydol out, I only have half health, which is like not great. I don't know if Aggron's gonna knock me out, it might. He goes for Thunder, I survive. My Flamethrower doesn't do half, that's because of Light Screen. I could also make a pop-up for Light Screen and Reflect if you want those, let me know. So now Torkoal is paralyzed and Aggron is probably gonna finish me off. But in the moment of truth, Thunder misses and I'm able to heal. And that led me to what the best strategy is against this thing. I should just keep spamming Rest until it runs out of uses of Thunder. When that happens, it'll start using Dragon Claw, which does much less damage, and then I can take it out. Cradle is next, I go for Flamethrower, it does more than half, it just sets up Ingrain, and then I finish it off on the next turn, and now it's time for Armaldo, the Venomoth of Generation 3. This thing is obviously a dual steel type, so Flamethrower finishes it off in one hit. And with that, Torkoal clocks in with a time of 2 hours, 39 minutes, and 57 seconds, with 23 resets at level 81. This took 9 hours and 10 minutes of game time. So where do these results place Torkoal in my Emerald leaderboard? 
Well, its real time is just slightly faster than Mawile, so with that metric, it is rank 7. However, when you're only doing a first playthrough, it tends to be more accurate to rank based on game time. I don't really like this metric that much, and in this case, Torkoal would actually earn the 8th rank, so still very much middle of the pack. Next week, I'm going to be doing a Q&A video saying thanks for 50,000 subscribers. It's going to be a playthrough of Pokemon Fire Red with Mew. Also, I've started releasing exclusive content for everyone who supports me on Patreon or through YouTube memberships. I really do want to clarify that these videos are not from my regular series, so you never have to worry about missing an installment from one of the series that is releasing here on YouTube. I view these exclusive videos as a way for you to get a little bit more content while I learn a new game, and that way I ensure that when I start releasing here on YouTube for the majority of the audience, I am actually playing at a decent level. After all, like, my Mewtwo video in Pokemon Emerald is really not my best play, and I'm going to have to remake it in the future. Also, I just want to say that you've been signing up at a rate that is, like, unprecedented, and we might actually complete the Hoenn Pokedex very soon. So thank you all so much. Like, subscribe, ring the Chimeco, and comment, because I gotta read them all. If you've made it this far, you're incredible. I'll see you in my next video.